What's up my dudes, my name is Sister Turley and this is the Whoops Guide to MX Simulator and these little puppies have probably taken more people out than polio bro, it's no joke in this game and for whatever reason it seems like anytime you try to ask anybody for advice or tips on hitting whoops, 99.99% of those motherfuckers are going to say, just hold it wide open bro, just lean back dude, you'll be fine and meanwhile... They've been playing the game for two years, and that's what they're doing. That's not what a beginner is supposed to be doing. You have to work your way up, man. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a whoop section. I don't care if it's a triple. I don't care if it's popping willies and spinning shitties. you got to work your way up through it, man. You can't just go out there and expect to hit it full blast the first day you're on the game. It's just not going to happen. The brain can't even handle that. There's no way. And another really bad thing that I think happens is that a lot of people come from Reflex or they come from Alive or any of those other games and they get a lot of these bad habits where they will do things like, for instance, they'll think they can just hold the throttle wide open everywhere or they think that in the whoops they can just lean back and hold it wide open and they'll be just fine because that's how those games are. And it's they build such bad habits. So I'm going to try to heal some of those habits that you guys might have if you've came from those games. And I'm going to go through and show you from a full-blown beginner basic level to a extreme professional level of hitting whoops out there. So... If you're just starting in this game, I recommend that you go to the 2011 Supercross tracks and start on those whoops. And then once you have learned all the whoops in the 2011 Supercross season, then you can move on to the 2012 Supercross tracks. And once you learn all those whoops, then you can go to the 2013, then 14, then 15, then 16. It's like this sort of difficulty progression that you can go through with each year of the tracks out there so that's a really important thing because if you're a beginner and you go out there and try to hop on a 2016 track it's not going to be pretty man it's the see it's all kind of laid out there where you don't have to go just zero to a hundred real quick you know what i'm saying you can kind of work your way up through the the middle ranges so like these these beginner years of whoops like 11 12 and 13 they're going to be a whole lot more forgiving and they're going to have way more of a middle ground whereas like those 14 15 and 16 whoops it's it's almost all or nothing and um so that's what makes those really tricky but so let me go ahead and just try to start this guide off there's so many things i've learned and i feel like I can actually teach you in a way where you can learn it more so than me just talking from this unrealistic pro level that nobody can understand. I'm going to try to take it back to a very, very basic level. So any of you guys out there that are amateurs or pros, just let me get through this first part of the video and then I'll get into some more advanced tips and techniques here in a second. But it may be a little slow at first. I just wanted to warn you guys. So... Okay, so with whoops, the first thing you want to think about is the corner, because that's before you ever even get into the whoops, okay? You don't want to worry so much about getting on the throttle too much out of the corner. That's one of the biggest mistakes people will make at the very beginning, because they think, oh my gosh, I've got to get so much speed to hit this whoop section, but... In reality, it's not that big of a deal at first anyways, because you're not even going to be able to go that fast through the whoops as it is. So another big thing is to learn how whoops are actually built. So any of these AMA replica style tracks out there, they're going to all be built a sort of standard way. Now you may go over here to somebody's custom track and it may be completely, totally different, but for the most part, any of these AMA replica style tracks they're going to be made like this. So let me just kind of go through this real quick so you understand. So the first little whoop of any whoop section is actually half the size of the rest of the whoops, if you didn't realize that. And that's the whoop that is going to actually allow you to get up on top of the other whoops. Because if they were all just the same size, you would just jump off that first whoop and you would never be able to glide over the whoops. So just remember that. Like, 
that's why that first whoop is there. So um, let me just start it off real slow. So if you're a full-blown beginner, this is your first day on MX Simulator, this is what you want to do. You basically just come up here just like this to the whoop section. You don't even have to have any speed at all. Just get it in first gear like this, okay? Um, and one of the biggest mistakes people will make is they will overcorrect. That is by far the biggest mistake in a whoop section. Don't worry so much about leaning or turning the bike. You want to just let the bike do its own thing. So this is kind of how you start off. And you want to be in first gear. Um, doesn't even really matter what bike you're on. I mean, if you're on a freaking 50, then yeah, you may be able to be in second gear. But when you're just first starting off, you probably just need to be in first gear, no matter what kind of gear ratio you got or any of that. So all you're doing is you're just rolling through the whoops, just like this right here. It's just how you would in real life. If you ever rode crazy supercross whoops in real life, this is what you do. Um, but the, the difference in real life and MX Simulator is that real life, there's a fear, there's an actual fear there that prevents you from just hammering it right into the whoops. So um, that's so awesome how this game is. It's so realistic in that sense where you've got to work your way up in so many different levels and so treat this game like it's real life motocross so if you wouldn't just go out there and blitz a whoop section in real life supercross then don't do it in this game you know you've got to learn it so what you do is you're just you're blipping the throttle just brop 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 you're not holding it wide open it's not really like you've got a steady throttle either you're just you're kind of blipping it just brop 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 and that gives you a whole lot more control when you're going real slow like that and what you're doing is you're just learning the balance on the bike it's it's not really like you're learning so much how to get through the whoops you're just you're basically learning your balance and um, that's a super important thing but you want to keep the bike as straight as you possibly can. You, like, you want to make sure you're actually hitting the whoop section parallel. You know, you're like straight with the whoop section. You don't want to come in here. Let me show you guys something. It's very easy for somebody to, for instance, come in here, turn too sharp, and then they're like, they're like this right here, where they're not even hitting the whoop section straight. And that will screw you up so many times. You want to get as straight as you possibly can, especially at a beginner stage like this, because any little kick or bump or anything like that is going to send the bike flying. So <laughs> that's what you want to try to avoid. But um, yeah, you just slowly work your way up. You roll through them like that and roll through them. And I'm kind of going to just be going through here and showing you guys a really fast forward time lapse. So don't think by no means that this is how quick that you're going to learn the whoops. I'm just going through and showing it in a quick little video. Video. So um, you just start going a little faster, a little faster, and um, you start doing kind of like this right here where you may like double, you know, you're kind of doubling them here and there instead of just rolling through them all. And you get a little faster, a little faster, and then you, you get to the point where um, you're actually going to start skimming the whoops. Now, this is an important thing to always keep in the back of your mind. It's not about giving it so much throttle before you get to the whoop section. It's a lot more about just getting up to the whoop section really smooth and then getting on the throttle once you get up on top of the whoops, especially at a beginner level. And that's what that first little whoop is made for. It's made to get you up on there. Um, you don't want to start off by getting too much speed or momentum. You just want to go into it really slow and what you're doing is you're basically just making sure your your front fender and front tire is just hitting on every single whoop that's what you're trying to do so that's like right here so just make sure it's, it's hitting on every single whoop just boom 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 real easy like that and then that's how you start to skim them that's your really basic beginner level of skimming whoops right there so hey i know, I know you might have thought it was never possible but uh there you go dude that's how you do it you, you just work your way up and um you just get a little faster just like that in first gear start getting on the throttle just a little more it may buck and kick and hook and do everything else but uh you just gotta don't be so worried about overcorrecting. If you crash, that's okay, but I promise you it, it's way better to just let the bike do its own thing. Like, seriously, man. You'll crash 10 times more often by overcorrecting than you will by just the bike itself screwing up on you, if that makes any sense. So, um, 
So you want to just keep it in first gear and um, try to actually go through the whoops without leaning or turning at all. Um, that will help you a lot. And um, most people, I think there's a big misconception out there that people think you've got to like lean all the way back or you've got to, you know, do all this crazy stuff on the bike. And that's just not the the real that's not what you're supposed to be doing um and that's definitely not how you learn the game now eventually yes you can get to the point where you're wide open through a whoop section but that takes a long long time bro let me tell you it's it does not happen quickly so um yeah just letting the bike do its own thing you can kind of get to where you're basically wide open in first gear um, then you get to the point where you can shift uh, through the actual whoop section and you just kind of figure out you know what speed you can hit whoops that's another big thing you start to just learn like okay how fast how fast am I through a particular type of whoop section? Then you just basically learn your speed so you don't really have to guess too much. Um, so you just get a little faster. Let's get in second gear right here. Okay, so see, I'm still basically hitting every single whoop. I'm just, I'm a little bit faster. Um, so you work your way up a little bit more, and I'll get over here in third gear. So once you get to the point where you're kind of um, up there in the speed range a little bit, you you will actually start skipping you, you'll kind of skip whoops here and there don't be afraid if it you know the front tire kind of jumps over one or two of them or something like that because that's what it starts to do whenever you get a lot of speed and that's just the way it is you're still basically using the same technique where you're looking at every single whoop it's just you're totally skipping over a few of them so um, you see that like right there at the very beginning, I think I totally, the front tire skipped over like two or three. So um, don't be afraid if it does that. You just got to stay on that horse, bro, and uh, don't let it get away from you. And you'll start to get these little moments where it's like, it's a gambling type thing where it's like, okay, do I need to get on the gas more to save it or do I need to let off? And don't be afraid to let off because you can do that. Let me show you. Like right here in third gear, I can totally let off and get right back down to that creeping zone. Um, a lot of people might think that you can't do that. They might think, oh gosh, if you let off in the whoops, then you're dead. But that's not really the case, especially with these older um, tracks like this. That's why they're so good for practicing because you can do whatever you want to do and you're, you're going to have a whole lot more forgiveness with it. So um, yeah, man, you just get a little quicker little quicker in third gear skipping through them a little bit and uh you just start to get more comfortable more comfortable and picking up that speed a little bit uh you just learn what the bike kind of starts to do over uh every single whoop and okay so let's see if i can hold it just full blown wide open i was there we go yeah that was fourth wide open um I got a look. You see me get a little squirrely out of the corner right there. That's very dangerous, and it's easy for that to happen. So, like, you know, you want to fully master a whoop section before you worry about hitting the corner very hard. And obviously, once you get to some of the later tracks, the momentum out of the corner is everything. But it, as a beginner, you don't really want to worry about that too much. And see how it, it started to get a little bit squirrely on me there at the, the middle of that? And that will start to happen when you get a crazy speed going, obviously. And once you get to that level where you're really feeling good and you're pretty quick, then you can start doing those minute little leaning elements and things on the bike where you're just you're turning just a little bit and you're you are leaning possibly back or forward just a little bit to keep the bike under control and I don't really know what it is but it's when you're going faster you can do more on the bike without it having such a negative effect but if you're in that really slow range or you're like a you know a medium amateur level you don't want to be leaning much at all because you're not even going fast enough yet you know I, I don't really know like the the science behind why that does that I'm just telling you from a personal basic level that's what it's always been to me like when you when you get going real fast that's the only time you can really lean and and pull on the bike um and you never want to lean and pull too much regardless it's just um at the beginner level it's crucial not to do that so 
Okay, so that's basically your basics. So I'm on 2014 Atlanta, and this is a track I recommend you going to if you feel like you finally mastered the 11, 12, and 13 tracks, because there is a fucking Grand Canyon of a gap between 13 and 14. I don't know why that is, but that's the the biggest gap, the biggest change of all tracks out there with the whoops, with the jumps, with everything. But um, this is going to be the best thing for a middle ground between a 13 section of whoops and a hard 2014 section of whoops. This is like a basically an easy version of a 14 section of whoops right here so this is what i recommend going to um these whoops are a lot different and that's something you'll learn once you get on different types of whoops you got to have different techniques and you've got to you've got to just do different things on the bike i mean they're all very different you can still roll through these pretty good they're not too peaked but they're really spaced apart so um, they can be very tricky because if you don't have speed through these, they're, they're just not going to flow right. They're not going to vibe very good at all for you. And uh, that, that makes them a little bit difficult, but it's good for you because you, you learn how to pick up the speed a little bit through them. Just like that right there. And um, they're pretty easy once you, once you get your speed level up and they're not that dangerous. So I feel like they're really good for practicing. It allows you to learn, okay... If I really want to get through this whoop section, I'm going to have to hit it hard. There's no medium ground. Once you start getting to the 2014 tracks, that's where that medium ground starts to disappear. You've got to either basically be no throttle or full throttle. Not full throttle, but I mean um, pretty good on the throttle. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, You can't be like half throttle just like I was on that 2013 track. You just can't do it or you'll die. So... Um, that's what you start to learn a little bit once you get to this point. But yeah, man, I, I recommend going to these whoops, uh, before you get to any of the other crazier 14 whoops, they'll give you a little bit of a, a bridge between 13 and, and some of the harder 14, whoa, sliding over, but, um, it'll help you learn that a little bit. So, okay, so let's go to a harder 14 section of whoops and a hum too, and, uh, this section of whoops is no joke. I mean, they're manly. They you got to be a boss to get through these right here. They're they're what you call um, tricky. Definitely, definitely takes some getting used to. If you've never hit these kind of whoops before, I mean, this is this is serious business now. This is not joking around. Like you got to either be on it or off it, one or the other. So like you can still roll through these as you guys can see, but you're going so much slower. It's it's like y you can't win a race like that. Nowhere even close. So, um, but this is where it gets tricky. This is where it takes a very long time to learn. Um, this is where the skill gaps really get decided. Uh, you can come in here in first gear like that, uh, like wide open first gear, and just kind of hop through them. But um, you, you just can't be like. You can't go in there and then let off the throttle midway and then hope, just hoping that it doesn't buck you because it's just going to buck you. <laughs> like, um, you know what I'm saying? You got to be like that right there. That's what it'll start doing on you. So you got to be careful. Th these kind of whoops, it's, it's basically like you are, you're on this unstoppable train and you've got to ride it out to the end or you're going to crash the train. You know, that's the best way to explain it, dude. Um, and that's the way you've got to have it in your mindset, you know, have the confidence of knowing that, Hey, I'm either crashing or I'm making it to the end of this whoop section. You don't want to get, get in that mode where you're like, ah, I can probably let off a little bit. No, you can't, you just can't do it. They're too difficult. Um, and th these are really peaked, really uh, not super close together, but they're kind of close together. So it's um, you you, it, you just get a lot of bounce on the bike. You get a lot of reflection off the bike. And if you're not used to it, it can be pretty crazy. But um, these kind of whoops, you've got to have momentum. You've you know before I was saying, oh, you, you can just come up to the whoop section pretty slow and then get up on top of them. And that's what you want to do as a beginner. Um, you know what I'm saying? On those older tracks and stuff, that's how you want to hit those. But like these, 
you want to get in the corner and make sure you've got momentum. And, you know, you basically got to have corner skill before you can even hit these kind of whoop sections because you can't just come up to them slow and then expect to ride it out. You've got to have momentum. Um, that's a really big tip for these types of whoops. You got to have momentum, but you got to have balls too. You can't just have momentum and no confidence. Um, so you can still go through these pretty hardcore. Like I can hold it wide open. Now I let off just a little bit in the middle, but let me see if I can hold it wide open in fourth. Fourth may be a little too high of a gear for this. Uh, I, generally, I would probably just be in third uh, with the way I have my bike set up for this, but Okay, here we go. Woo! She's getting skatey. <laughs> She'll definitely do that a little bit. Um, this is where it's getting to where I, I would have to focus pretty deeply to hit these whoops like really hard. I'm doing this video live right here, so um, that just gives you a little bit of an example of how like the difficulty range... You know, I would really need to start focusing. It'll do that right there on you a bunch, but like it, it's starting to get to that difficulty point where, you know... You need to put some headphones on, put down your peanut butter sandwich. You can't be having no slick hands. Like, you got to focus, dude. Um, it's It takes a lot of mental skill and capacity to get through hard whoops like this. So, um, once you learn it, though, it's not that bad. Once you, you know, you, you've learned just the technique of getting through them, then, then you can kind of adjust yourself on the bike for whatever speed level you're at, whatever it is you're doing. So... Okay, so sometimes you'll get these crazy whoop sections like these right here. These are super small and super close together, but don't let it fool you, okay? They are very, very tricky because you've got a lot of room to hit them, and you're coming right off that triple right there, and you could get all the speed in the world, but it's you've got to know when to slow down to, to get at your whoop pace. You know exactly how fast you can hit whoops, and you, you want to make sure, you know, regardless of what kind of obstacles before the section of whoops you want to always make sure you've got your speed to whatever you're comfortable at hitting whoops at so um right here most people would slow down before they hit this whoop section coming off that triple and um they're super small and tricky and you just you've got to make sure that your back end doesn't start skating on them because it'll try to do that on you quite a bit but um so that's 14 whoops. That's kind of your amateur level. That's your, um, at least in this day and age of MX Simulator with these bikes and stuff, It's th this is your amateur point right here. So let's get into some more pro stuff. So let's go to 16. Mm, let's see. 16 Atlanta's got a pretty crazy set. Um, Yeah, we'll just go to 16 Atlanta. So, man, whoops, probably one of the most difficult things in this game. Everybody has trouble with it. Don't let it discourage you because it just, trust me, everybody gets so frustrated they want to punch a hole in the wall from whoops. <laughs> That's just the nature of it. That's the way they are. So if you find yourself crashing on whoops every lap, we've all been there. We've all went through that stage. Um, you just over time man you, you just get it and then before you know it it's they're not that bad they're always still a uh, some level of scary like some level of sketchy but it's it, it does get a lot better once you get better at the game so so those sectional whoops they are a really long section and it gets pretty scary because you're you've got to go a whole lot faster through these whoops you cannot be messing around like going medium speed or it's just going to bounce you right off the bike um you've got to be committed and and you can when you get to like this speed i mean i'm i'm still blipping the throttle a little bit i'm, I'm on it steady but i'm also blipping it at the same time if that makes any sense that's kind of what you get at a super pro level um now i could get to the point where i'm fully wide open through those whoops but it's just not going to be as consistent because they're they're so peaked themselves that I would actually get too much speed and then I would be skipping over too many of them. Then the front end would go down in one. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you've got to learn what speed is too much for that particular whoop section. So, um, like, let's see what happens when I hold it wide open. So, like, that right there, it just, you're like, you're overly, 
you're going too fast for the own good of the whoop section. You know what I mean? It's not so much like a skill, like you can't do it. It's just, it's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth trying to hold it wide open through that kind of whoop section just because of the way it's built. So you'll learn little things like that and you just learn all different types of whoops out there. And uh, once you do that, man, it, it does definitely get easier. And you'll learn where you can sort of lean back a little bit on the bike through the whoops. And you, you, you kind of work the bike, you know, um, like when you get in, I'm getting into some more advanced stuff right here. So, uh, but you'll like through the middle way through the whoop section, you know, you'll be kind of leaning forward, lean back uh, just slightly. It's all about minuteness here. Uh, I'm telling you guys, it's, you don't want to get too crazy with it, but it's just confidence, minute movements and and steady throttle steady blipping throttle that's about your best bet for most whoop sections like this right here and um manage like you know keep it as straight as you can that's that's another very very big tip you, uh, especially on something like this where it's got a finish line jump like that there's something that you can really mess up on where let me show you guys so like if i come around here and i over jump this finish line like this then I'm see I'm hitting that and then I'm not even settled for the whoop section. My suspension is compressed while I'm hitting the whoop section because I over jumped that jump. So you want to make sure whatever kind of section you have before the whoop section that you land that perfectly. That's not one of those sections that you want to over jump just to just to make up a little bit of time. Like you definitely want to make sure your suspension is not compressed or jacked up at all before you enter the whoop section. You want to make sure it's perfect. You know, it's it's at a perfect riding level. So um, then you got this other little whoop section over here. Some of them are more difficult than others. You just, you kind of learn that. And uh, like, okay, this is another big tip for some of you guys. There's some of these sections out there, and this is on some older tracks too, but um, you can kind of get away with it a little more on older tracks. But like if you have a single like this right here where you can almost jump into the whoop sections, nine times out of ten, that's not what you want to do. <laughs> Jumping into a whoop section is not smart. And it's most time it's not fast at all either. So like for instance, I can jump into this whoop section and then I'm going to get huck and buck all day long off of it. Whereas if I come over here and just kind of like scrub off of this little single, I'll actually get way more momentum and speed through the whoop section than I would have from jumping it. You see like this right here? So that's basically the guide to whoops, man. I hope this video helps some of you guys out. And whoops are one of the biggest time savers on a supercross track. It's so important. If you're not hitting the whoops fast, you could be losing seconds. I mean, full-blown seconds, which is really big when you get to a pro level. So um, work on those whoop skills, dude. It definitely pays off in the long run. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching the video. Later, dudes.